there's there's that headset. I uh, oh look, I am. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Hi. I'm not dressed up in a suit tonight. Couldn't be bothered. I am alive. Uh, I have clearly got the Barry White. What's going on? Thank you very much. And I'm just trying to work out why my OBS has suddenly gotten rid of my microphone. Good times. Good times. Yeah. I'm having some sound troubles. Give me one sec. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You should be able to hear me okay there. But uh, I don't understand why the microphone has vanished. So just give me a sec. Thanks. Thanks for following, guys. Just give me a sec. Here we go. How's that? There we go. That should be working fine. All right, let's do a sound check on that. Are we good? Are we happy? Let's get rid of that because it should be coming through on that microphone up there. Um, I can see the sound flashing away. Thank you. Okay, so I, I literally walked away, put my kids to bed, came back, and OBS had gotten rid of a microphone. Fucking whatever. <laughs> hey, what a week. Look, <coughs> excuse me, had COVID, still got it. Uh, still doing this, not getting in a suit tonight. You guys don't want to hear me preamble too much though. Um, this was an amazing match to watch and I'm super excited to actually be casting this again because uh, I cast it in my head on the day. Uh, so I, I'm super chuffed. All right, I'm just going to play the video in the background here. This is what you're watching on the screen here now. So this is a pre-record. Uh, I sat on the 10th mountain, uh, sorry, 20th. What is it? 20th pounds are going to get... Deer and Tender Mountain. Let me get the data up for them. They've given me a heap of information because uh, I really like to get involved with it. So it's 10 Mountain Division and 20th Panzer Grenadiers. Um, these guys I've actually cast for with Trauma Stu before. Uh, he and I did a match earlier this year. There was a friendly, I think, with the Foy Boys in OC. So uh, I, I do know some of the names in the 20th and 10th, uh, which was really good. And so I was pleased that I had that. Um, yeah, that's and Stu's there. G'day, Stu. Good to see you, mate. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I was super chuffed that I got to do this match second time, second second one in the competition. Uh, and so there's a lot of names here we're familiar with, and I will talk about some of them. The beauty of this, though, because I did a pre-record, um, I have got uh, stats from who did what and how, so that's helped us a lot. So let's get through a little bit here and start looking at the Chimera guys as they came in. Uh, here we go. That's where I want to be, isn't it? So uh, Kamara, of course, well known to me. A lot of the names here are very familiar. Uh, but some of the regulars that we will see doing their thing again and the names to watch out for on Kamara in particular. Uh, Mab, of course, Butterdog, uh, Pell Let Loose, he, he's another well-known name. Brainless um, plays and runs a lot of the Friday Night Fight stuff as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully that won't happen too much. All right, so we'll come back and we'll have a look at some of these names as the match proceeds. I don't want to preamble huge amounts uh, in this because I don't think there's any need for it. You guys want action, uh, so we will get into the action. Here's a lovely little shot uh, that I recorded, and I'm just skipping through the video here, by the way. Let's get rid of my face because uh, it's not the most impressive face in the world. And let's just go with the full screen. You guys don't need to see my head. Uh, this is the pre-match stuff where I was just watching them set up, and so I thought I'd uh, actually look together and to write a message. If you all stand together, I'll take a photo, because uh, I've got voice turned off. Uh, so this was nice. I was doing a bit of team photo stuff. Uh, anyway, let's get moving along here. Here is, <laughs> by comparison, down the other end of the map. 
Uh, so I shot down to see what the 20th and 10th were up to and uh, if they were doing any team photos or anything like that. And uh, it was just a hodgepodge of bodies uh, around shooting at the air. <laughs> this is how a team should be run. Shoot at the air lots. Uh, it works. So, uh, yeah, the boys were, boys and girls were setting up there uh, and getting ready to go. All right, there's the Camaro guys again. Let's just scroll across. So here's our little look-see at the um, team list now. And I'll do this proper from this point onwards in relation to what we've got. So VK, of course, is the commander of the Camaro team in this round. I think he does it most of the time. That seems to be what's happening there. Uh, a couple of key names there. Knox, absolute sniper elite Knox is. So I really would suggest you keep an eye on him when you see him on the map. Panic, uh, one of their really, really good players. Road Rage, Jinx. These are guys and girls that you should be looking out for. Uh, Candy Rocks as well uh, d does some very deliberate plays. Very different to a lot of the other players there. Uh, but yeah, Mav Squad there in particular uh, are a squad to watch on, on the Camaro side. If we get across and have a look-see at the uh, 20th and 10th, uh, key players to look out for is Staff Sergeant Kayak. Uh, Evo Platypus, I remember, Stu, if you remember, Evo Platypus came up a number of times in the match that we cast a few months ago. So, uh, again, look for him on the field. Uh, Glitter Poop is another one to look for, too, not just because of his name, but because he's uh, a good player. And uh, <coughs> Drew and Kane and Clementine are three other names that I'd like you to keep an eye on. Uh, one of those, I think it's Clementine I've seen before. Uh, I don't know those guys as well as the Camaro guys, of course, but uh, that's what we're doing there. All right, here we go. Let's scroll across a bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So we're fighting on St. Maraglis, or St. Maraglis, uh, whichever way you want me to butcher that, I can. And uh, this is a really, really, really favourite map um, for a lot of people because it's got so many cool options. It's got open tank fields. It's got buildings. It's got, uh, you know, closed spaces and everything like that. And as we just get in here, you'll notice it's checkpoint is the point that they are fighting over. And checkpoint is a real bastard to fight over. The reason I say that is because, um, and if we just get this back up on the full screen here, I don't know why it's shrunk down. Let's do this. So I'm going to give you a better look at the map here while we're doing this. So here is um, the uh, map and the checkpoint there is at the bottom. And that's what we should be looking for in this match. That is a bastard to fight over because of the way the approaches work for it. Uh, so when I say that, and we'll go to the main screen map uh, in a second and look at it properly there, but the two channels that feed into it, that's one of the things that we should look for. The second thing to look, note for is the top of, of uh, the checkpoint area. So let's get that up. Hopefully I'll put it up in a bit. There we go. So if you look here, these two feeder lines that come into checkpoint, they're, they're well protected north and south uh, and also from east and west line of sight. So you can feed troops into checkpoint from either direction uh, all the time, and that's important. Cemetery is a key area there uh, for the blue team and, of course, Ruta Gambosville for the red team. <coughs> and they're nice and close. And so that area that I just circled up to the north, that's important in, in relation to the buildings. Down south here, you can see there's a lot of open fields. Um, and that is... Uh, you know, good tank country down there and good AT country. Whereas up in those buildings up north, that's a hand-to-hand -hand fighting kind of stuff. Uh, and those feeder lines, you can see here, if I get that on screen, you can see here going through the middle of it, this sort of feeder, hedgerows, ditches, trenches, or whatever, there's one there. Um, you know, getting garrisons back up here and just feeding troops in is important. Uh, and you'll see that a little bit in any time you see this match played. Now, um, let's get a look at the actual township area itself as we zoom through here. It's always nice to have a look at what we're actually fighting over for the initial start, because it'll come around that we'll be fighting over other parts of the map, potentially either to the right or left. Uh, while we're looking at that, I mean, take a look at the main body of the map. It's lots of buildings north and lots of open south. That's kind of how it feels to me when I look at this map. Uh, so it tends to be a little bit more open warfare down the south side, and that's what we initially will see. Uh, so tanks and long, long shots are important. Uh, I'm just going to get the watermarked up here while we, while we do this and while we actually work out uh, who's going where. <laughs> Having a look across here, because we can't see their icons on the map, what the uh, 20th and 10th are actually up to. You can see here they've got a few down the south, but there's a big chunk up in the middle here. That was a supply truck, transport truck full, absolute chockers there. Um, God, I wish they had those little motorbikes with the sidecars. That'd be cool. Uh, <coughs> 
so many things you could do with this game, isn't it? All right, so this is what is going on. Now, let's get the header bar up. We've got the header bar up. We don't have Camera. It's actually going to switch around the other way. So let's switch that and let's switch that. No, that's not going to work because I'm always going to be on blue. Let's go back the other way and get it right. All right, so blue will always be Camera and 20th 10th will always be orange. Um, and that gives you that indication at the top of the map. And at the moment, it's two cap points apiece. Uh, and we're underway. And the big surge of uh, troops coming from both ways, that's what will occur, of course, as they all rush to try and cap this point early. Now, what we've got to watch out for is who's got the got the um, momentum to get in there quick enough because it is open on both sides here. So the chances are that no one's going to get held up on anything. Uh, like, you know, Purple Heart Lane, people get stuck in rivers and all sorts of stuff. I've seen that before. You can see here straight up, the two trucks are actually quite close. The, maybe the Camaro guy is a little bit closer. Yeah, they're just starting that cap now. We'll see how many they're dumping out though. There's the uh, Colonel Matthews is the commander of the uh, 20th and 10th over there on the left-hand side. Colonel from the, he's actually from the 10th. Uh, and look, yeah, look, the numbers are coming in from Camaro here onto the point straight away, but they've got that town force in as well. They seem to have got their forces in on that center line road, the center spine of the map here. They've got them there first. There's a shot. Don't know where that went. And I want to point out something too. If you go back on the replay of this video, at the very start of the match, um, while we were watching, there was a long shot fired in towards the red zone from uh, Camaro. I did pick that up on the day. I just forgot about it until now. So they've actually pre-positioned some fire in, and folks want to think about that because if they had kept firing, they would have actually hit the friggin' truck, but they stopped firing. So go back and watch the replay of that. It's it's amazing. So this this is brutal here. This is brutal because the Camaro guys have got the one v one upper hand here. Let's bot John Panic and Anger. I told you about this squad. Mav squad right there, right up at the front line there. Mav's going to come around and kill Kane. Yeah, look at him. Trim that down. That artillery, that pre-positioned artillery coming in from 20th and 10th, is hitting the ground where they think Camaro were going to be. But Camaro have already moved past that. They've actually gone under the guns, like Beersheba. So they've gone under the guns and they're actually in the uh, zone there. And now the artillery from Camaro, though, is actually is hitting well and it's nailed in behind their shaggy. His mate just got hit. And there's already a few of the 20th and 10th over the back there now, having to respawn in because they, they've got no spawn points up forward. <coughs> there's one, though. That's a great spawn wave coming in there on that front area from uh, Agent My Goose uh, Shaggy. Where those guys are, the Camaro guys, they now have consolidated this position. You can see they've set up on little fire points. Oh, good artillery from 2010. Uh, that is a great shot. So it's a bit balanced here at the moment, but Camaro have got the upper hand on this point. You can see the town area up north that I mentioned very briefly at the start. Camaro got the upper hand up there too. They managed to get on the west side or the 20th, 10th side of that road. And um, now they've actually got this held. That's what you want. That's what you want, because now they've got the two controls and they've taken the point. So the early cap has gone to Chimera. The early cap of, uh, checkpoint has gone to Chimera. So what we're fighting over now, of course, is 10th have got to, uh, I, I guess, uh, get the shit together again. Uh, the first wave attack didn't work for them, but I'm sure they'll have some folks coming in, spawning in. Chimera have got to consolidate here now. That was a tank uh, shell just bounced or ricocheted off something. I could hear that. Let's have a look at that one, see what it is. Here's the spawn wave, the second spawn wave now coming through from the 2010th. Um, here's that Panzer IV that I just mentioned, took a ricochet. There's the tank up there, uh, up the top right. And as I said, Candy Rocks. Uh, hey, you're probably good to see you. Yeah, you'll, this voice is going to get rusty, mate, let me tell you. All right, so that is going to be shooting as Look at that engineer symbol where Candy Rocks is. There's generally always going to be a tank because her role seemed to be repair the tanks. And uh, we'll, we'll just see how she goes with that, of course. But that engineer serum will gives it away where the tanks are from our viewing perspective. So the Panzer there is facing off against, I'd assume, a medium tank. <coughs> the town area is still good pressure uh, from Camaro to push this through, but they haven't actually taken the whole area, of course, because there's so many little lines of uh, movement and manoeuvre here that uh, it's very hard to clear everyone out. And I can hear a Luke's down the bottom right corner there shelling away. They're a real shit of a tank on these maps because you've got so many little hidey spots where you can drive your little Lukes around. Um, light tanks do actually quite well here. Um, if you've got good intel on where the enemy tanks are, that's important. Uh, airbags hurt, love the name. Uh, he's got 1v3 here, machine gun. Let's pull it out, see what he can do with it. Uh, he's hiding around the back of the building there. That Lukes, though, is really going to prevent support. Good, uh, good counter punch here coming in from the 2010th uh, as they push in on Lupus there. And Lupus, I believe, just subscribe. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. I really do. Uh, we are actually coming up in the next two weeks for a giveaway night. So watch this space uh, to give away Steam keys just because whatever. All right, taking a sip of coffee to get the voice working. You can hear the speculator rockets moving around. 
Uh, there's Evo Platypus. Keep an eye on him. He does some good work uh, in all matches, so we'll see how he goes tonight. Uh, Chimera have been halted a little bit here. Uh, you can see the uh, the uh, 2010th uh, pushing into those buildings and just trying to clear them out a bit. Uh, it is hard fighting, and, and I know this. There we go. Look at that. Bam, bam. One trade, one trade. Uh, spawns coming in. It's pretty even numbers there. This would have been hard in this city area. It always is in this central city area here. Von Luck and Mudshot around the back here starting to harass that artillery of the uh, 2010th, and that is critically important for holding something like Checkpoint, where it is a little bit open, and the lines of supply come in along those two yellow roads there. Just having a look at what's going on in the map here I was, and you can see Camaro pushed up towards Rudigan Vosville, and that is very critical for 2010th. They have to hold this Rue area. It is sort of open. Uh, there's a lot of lines. You can see all these different lines coming in here that they can uh, get approached on. Uh, so something to just keep an eye on there as to how you defend that or how you attack that. Look at the rockets and stuff going on up there from uh, the 2010th guys against that uh, tank that's over in the middle of the paddock. <laughs> the field. There's the Luke's down in front of us. Took out Bot John. That Luke's uh, has been ripping shit up for the last 10 minutes. Well done to it. So we've been playing for 10 minutes here, team. 10 minutes going on, and it's it's stabilizing a little bit here. You can see there's a whole blob of blue on the left and a whole blob of orange on the right there, and that's where they're holding off. So we probably should change that header bar, shouldn't we? I always forget that. Uh, let's go. It's a 3-2 to Chimera at the moment. And we'll put that up there so people can actually see what's going on. Another speculator rocket into the side of the loops. This is the problem with uh, tanks when you put them in the middle of a field and you don't have enough infantry support. Uh, it's It's been picked off there. Lovely flanking work from Caledonius to actually get around and put one in the side of that loop. And, of course, it woke it up, uh, which meant that it was... You know, it was well flagged, everyone knew where it was, and then boom, down she went. Uh, there was a long range shot that came in from somewhere up at the one o'clock position. And uh, like I do with my streams, I will point out to you that if we use this like a clock face, the middle here, 12 o'clock's at the top, six at the bottom, three at the right, and nine at the left. And that way I can give you references while I'm actually talking about what's going on. So up in that two o'clock position at the moment, there is a tank, we know that. Uh, somewhere up there, there's a tank from the, uh, the Allied side. And the uh, Chimera guys are on the Allied side. That's why the little Allied icons up here on the screen next to their uh, badge. And, of course, the uh, 20th and 10th are the Axis and the Axis symbols up there. All right, Chimera definitely getting the, the run of that town area there. Uh, but they've, they've, they've stopped on checkpoint. They're not really pushing forward. <coughs> and rightly so, because uh, there's a lot of 2010th there holding Rudigan Bob's up. But what I like, I like to see is when we've got a squad leader who's doing some of that more strategic play. Now, whether that's something VK is directing from Chimera or whether that's something Electro is taking on board, uh, if it's the latter, it's probably a bit more like me where I might let the commander know I'm doing it. But I tend to try and work a little bit like a recon guy and go out and try and take some stuff out and build some garries and help the commander out because that's what squad, good squad leaders do, isn't it? That's what you want to see. So there's Electro out there starting to work some of those uh, Garys for Chimera and starting to get some of that sector control. Here's Havoc around the back, uh, starting the harassment process on uh, the Chimera back lines, and there's Deer Killer in there as well. Brainless back here on uh, defense with Mick. So there's five on Chimera back here at the moment, uh, two, two defending and three on artillery. Uh, their artillery, I think, has played a part so far. We'll see how it goes through the match, of course, and we'll have another look now down the other end and see what the um, what the 20th and 10th uh, artillery is like. And I'm going to say this because I talked to Colonel Matthews about it uh, after the match, um, that they were... Look, just watch Road Rage here. He's a very, very good player, Road Rage. One of my top players from Camara, to be honest. And he's got three against him at the moment. Now, Joker knows his mate just died, and everybody else can see that that guy's dead on the ground there. Let's just see what happens here. There's Road Rage. He's just popping away there. There's a couple of tankers trying to get to a tank. There's another one dead. Joker's still there. Uh, you know, the tank is hiding. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's another one dead. So there's now five. So Road Rage has killed three in the time we've been watching him. Uh, and he's just taking a shot. So he moves away. He, he moved away from that firing position. He's no longer there. And he's going to go and camp on the side a bit. So they're still shooting at that position. Road Rage is not there anymore. He's not silly enough to do that. And he's waiting here now to see what happens with uh, Triton. And I know we're missing part of the battle back there, but I, this is vitally important. There were six guys, seven even, here, and one blue sniper was holding up their artillery. There's not been a single artillery round fired for the last minute, two minutes. 
And there's another one dead. He's just picked off Trident as well. How critical is this? There is no friendly artillery landing forward now from the orange team. None whatsoever. And so these guys up front are fighting with one hand tied behind their back because blue artillery is still landing. You can see it smashed in everywhere it wants to. And not a single shell from orange is landing at the moment, which means they have no support, no combined arms. And I rant on about combined arm stuff. Um, and so this, this is hard for 20th and 10th at the moment. It is hard because they're trying to do it just with rifles in their hands sort of thing. A uh, bit of tank support perhaps. I haven't actually seen anything since the Luke, so I'm looking for it. Uh, we'll just whip around the back here and have a look now. Here's the... But yeah, look, this is... Um, this is just some of that important stuff. So I guess part of it there is uh, learning how to clear out someone who is as skilled as Road Rage, who is literally holding up six or seven players there on the uh, 20th and 10th side. Those those types of things are the comp level stuff that I can't tell you I'm great at it, uh, but it's something we should all learn from. Now, some really good defensive stuff here going on. Uh, Definite consolidation here from Camaro. They are pushing the attacking squad up. Mav squad seems to be the attacking squad. That's these guys in here. Um, they're, they're the attacking squad that I, that I could tell this week. Uh, so they spend more time up forward uh, pushing while they've got others back in defense. What I love though, oh, look, it makes me all sorts of excited. We can't show that on camera. There, there are infantry supporting tanks. Oh, oh, I love it. It's just any match, anytime I see infantry running with tanks or working with tanks, I'm just excited. It's it's just it's what you should do. It's what you do, right? The good the good teams don't leave their tank out to get shot in the ass, um, or in the sides, right? That's that's important. Uh, there, there though, the artillery's finally back on point there for the 2010. They've dropped some smoke on that tank. They obviously get the shit with it. They can't shoot it, so they might as well get rid of it. So that's good play. I like it. I like that smoke round. I wasn't expecting that. <coughs> Excuse me. A uh, good little push going along in that little uh, fence line there from Mav Squad. And we've got these guys, a bit of open field push there. Brave. I'll give you that. It's brave. Das, Eden, and uh, Jinx going across the field there. But uh, they're good players. They're throwing, they're throwing smoke. They're using that smoke forward there where Rising Magic is to try and shield them from gunfire from this way. And they're popping random smoke. That's, that's not bad. You, you can get across open fields if you use clever smoke. Uh, really good push coming along here, though, from uh, the... Uh, the 20th and 10th, then Sledge, you good evening, mate. I'm, I'm all right. I've had, I had Barry White, uh, or for those old enough, Lou Rawls, uh, voice for a few days, but now it should be okay. I'm still a bit sick. Uh, I'm still in lockdown for a couple of days because I've still got symptoms. Anyway, let's let's uh, let's come back to that later on, I guess. We'll see if my voice lasts, then I must be okay. Uh, it's been a rough few, a few days. It was a very rough end of last week. Let's put it that way. Uh, just tired. Mostly. A uh, really good little press coming in here from 20th 10th, though, out of out of Rue. But it's been countered by the fact that there's all these blue force down the bottom here now. Uh, so the guys the guys here from uh, 20th 10th are just getting pushed back, you know, a metre at a time, uh, 10 metres at a time. That That is really grindy World War One type stuff. But sometimes it gets effect. Now look up that top left, look at the 11 o'clock position. There's Electro that we talked about before. He's around the back of the lines now, the 20th, 10th. And what he'll be doing is looking for little supply drops from the commander, from VK, and getting some uh, garrisons in there to start the pressure on Rudigan Bozil. Uh, not a lot of pressure going on for uh, checkpoint here. However, 20th, 10th definitely are trying to control this north area here, uh, the 12 o'clock position up near the township. And it is important to control that because that's an obvious feed line into the route again, Bosville, but it also gives them a launch point right along that road into checkpoint. That's what you want. There's the tank pushing in now. And uh, this is where I start to get a little bit nervous for the tank because he's left all of this infantry behind. Uh, I don't remember exactly what happens here, but I don't like the fact that a tank is now sitting over here by itself with all the infantry over this way. Um, no, all right, you, you, you wait for your infantry. You're not in a rush, you've got time. So if you start seeing your infantry not keeping up with you, you say, all right, fucking infantry, get up here. Or you wait, you tell your driver, mate, stop. We're gonna wait for that infantry to catch up with us. Or we're gonna reposition. Uh, but it's a bit exposed here on that right flank of the tank. It's exposed. There's Nadig, look at him. Look at him lining up. Surely, he's he knows that tank's there because big Tex is in there. He'd be looking. Uh, this, is, this is why. This is why. No infantry there to know what's going on in that right flank. <coughs> tank just takes a round from the front. It's a panther down the bottom center here. They absolutely know it's there now. So there's a tank trade off here. That tank is backed off. 
Uh, as it backs off, Nadig's going to get a side shot on him. Yeah, look at that. Bam. One in the side, and that tank is in real trouble there with no infantry to support to shoot the infantry shooting at it. The tank's a different story. You can't really do much against tanks. 1v1, uh, you know, you're, you're on your own there a bit, tank. But uh, taking a couple of rounds in the side there, not ideal. That could have been done better. Um, but there's little things like that I look for. But look, it's, it's, it's maybe picking in the 90th percentile of things to improve on for any team. Uh... 20th, 10th really holding this quite well here. They have got the spawn points set up and they've got their defensive line up reasonably well. These guys here, Arizona Dupus, uh, look, they're all pushed forward to try and set up some sort of, uh, uh, you know, left and right flank defense there. And you can see there's quite a press coming in from uh, the Chimera guys, but that Panther is quite dominant here. Uh, nasty little tank, the old Panther. So uh, I, uh, I can see a bit of trouble here for Chimera. Checkpoints still being held quite nicely. We focus a little bit on this. Look, lots of rounds coming in. Bam! Whatever that is, uh, I think there might be two tanks here. There's a yeah. There, I think there is. There's two tanks here. That Panther's taking a bit of a beating. Yes. Look at that. That must be a pair of 76s. Uh, but something else just shot way over to the back there. There's rounds going in everywhere. Fuck me. It is on. Lots of big guns down here. I'm pretty sure we've got another tank here off to the right. It's not just that 176. From what I remember, uh, we've still got that push going on up there to the north, up to the 12 o'clock position there for um, uh, for 20 tenth. So I'm going to try and get back up there. Yeah, look at that, two tanks. That's what I thought. Uh, so a pair of 76s, but they're both a bit dodgy at the moment, um, and no infantry helping me. Here's our poor old Candy, legging it back in, carrying the tanks. Oh, did you see that shot? <coughs> Can't get too excited. Nady. And again, no no infantry support. Oh, geez, that was a bit of a speculator. Uh, but poor old Candy there, trying to do all the work there to help me keep these tanks alive. Get get these tanks two more infantry, team. Come on. Just two more people. And they could do so much more. Anyway, uh, Candy's doing all the work there, it's trying to save those tanks. Uh, there's the Panzer four, I think. There, there it is, up where Jaeger is. Sudden Jaeger. Good kill from that Panzer four. Straight to the side of the 76. Took it down. Well done, nice shot. Uh, Von Luck now racing in behind with uh, supplies. You might be trying for an AT gun, actually. Uh, and now that's, this 76 is taking him in the face. Uh, so, really good counter punch. I think that's an AT gun, actually, that just shot through there. Great counter punch from the 20th, 10th. Uh, took out two big tanks there from the Chimera guys. Uh, and I just think they were a little bit overexposed there, those tanks. Just a little bit overexposed. Uh, hard. Picking at straws, maybe? I don't know. Uh, 2010th here. Look, Mav Squad's pushed right in there. That's nice work from Mav Squad. Well done there, uh, lads and lasses. And while we're just watching this a little bit, let's talk a little bit first of all about the 20th, 10th. We'll start with the uh, the 10th. Um, so that's Colonel Matthews is leading that today, and uh, he's the head of that actual clan and he's one of the HCA reps for the team. And Mighty Goose is from the 20th. And we'll talk about Mighty Goose in the 20th shortly. It's their first competitive tournament. So like Chimera. Uh, 20th, 10th, or the, the 20th are actually in their first. I think the 10th, uh, as a conglomerate, is their first overall together as well. Um, and uh, and as an alliance, and for 10th, yes, he did say that. So their competitive history is mostly friendlies. They had an OC 4 boy one and then they had a BST2, was a 5 0 defeat. A lot of little things bit him in the ass. Look at the puma. Oh, smoked. Oh, that will leave a mark. That's a good little re recon tank. Well done there, boys. Uh, good work from that tank going around and ripping shit up and, and just messing up the uh, battle tactics here from or the strategic play, rather, should I say, from the Chimera guys. I'm just looking for the garrison, though. They missed. Look at this. Right in the field there. We'll be in a scout. Just, just missed it. And uh, I think they were looking for it and they didn't find it. Maybe they thought Entice over there had it. Uh, this garrison is... Look, it's, it's, it's far enough away from this point over here that it'll give them a chance. The Chimera could have a good run on here but good defense here from uh, uh 20th although they are fairly deep here on this bunning building aren't they uh I, i'd be trying to press up onto that ridge that the hedgerow there on that where das and jinx and all that are because by being so far back it means that the chimera guys can push up and put in uh on parade fire from here into the point whereas if if orange were up here they could only be attacking from this way really and maybe up this way <coughs> little things little things here's the supply drop thought it was an airhead i missed out Electro, lurking around the back there for that supply drop, I'm guessing. Uh, let's talk a little bit more out of the 10th. Uh, they're the hardest the hardest working guys, they reckon, are Star Sun JT, Ick Bella, 
And first sergeant scout, scout club, scout, scout cub, sergeant Evo platypus, who I talked about before, definitely. Corporal tank, yep, another one to watch, as I said, and a few others. Um, that they, they, they put in a lot of time to get this working, like all clans do, and it's really great to see, and for our viewing pleasure. Uh, Matthews, uh, Kurt Matthews plays the commander for the team. Uh, and there's quite a few of their guys that are actual real life veterans. They've served in the 10th mountain in real life. Uh, so hats off to you gentlemen and ladies and thank you for your service. Uh, Tank, Havoc, Scout Club, Cub and a few others they reckon. Uh, they had, and this is this is the stuff you want to hear about. Uh, you see, by the way, while we, we're talking through this, there's good con sector control here from the Chimera guys. This Puma, uh, again with the tanks, going out on your own, I just know. Why? 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 Do you, I mean, okay, maybe they're looking for garrison stuff. Not in a city. Get out in the open fields where you can keep maneuvering and moving. He's seen Blackjack there. He's tried to shoot at it. No, Gotrek's got his eyes on. Blackjack doesn't get hit. Uh, Caledonia's coming in with AT. Look at this. Butterdog coming in with AT. Oh, is, is this going to go exactly the way I think it is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That is just brutal play there from the guys. Well, well killed. Don't send your recon tanks through a town that's held by the enemy. Um, yeah, no. Sorry, guys, that was a poor move. Coco up on the building here. Uh, lovely machine gun spot. All right, let's talk. One of the things that Ted Mountain, uh, they said they recently had a big meetup and a D-Day reenactment in Ohio. About 15 of the 10th Mountain guys showed up, which was awesome. Pretty faces they made. Love it. Love it. I'd love to see some footage of that, actually. Uh, that'd be cool. And what they're trying to achieve is to gain experience and knowledge in competitive play. <coughs> they're, they're new to the scene. They're expected to be the underdog in most matchups. Uh, they'll take some lumps and it'll benefit them in the long run. They want to win and losing pisses off. More than they're happy to admit, but the lessons in your experience gained are valuable. Uh, I guess the first one I can say is that Chimera are on the artillery all the time, and 10th Mountain are not. Or 10th and 20th are not. Uh, and there are two people at the moment holding up the 20th, 10th artillery. So there is something absolutely needs to be worked on for the 20th and 10th, or any team that's looking at this. Um, they're not pushovers, and that's definitely going to be shown today here. We'll see how they play out, shall we? Because uh, remember, there's a bunch of people here who don't know who's actually going to win or lose this one. It could go either way. Uh, and it is one of those matches that it could have gone either way a few times. So we'll watch that out of wonder. Uh, they won't underestimate anyone, and they're looking forward to uh, showing the community that they belong. 20th and 10th, I can tell you straight up, guys, you do. This was, uh, and Comera do as well, this was one of the best matches I've watched. All right, we've got this brutal defense going on here. Uh, I mean, it's been absolutely shut down everything that Khmer have thrown at it so far. There's, they've thrown multiple tanks, squads, top squads. But look around the back here. Electro and the crew have finally got that garrison up around the back. Uh, here's Jinx playing. Look at this. Jinx, one of the top players of Khmer. Now he's just shredded one. And there's two more here now that are looking and going, well, there's obviously a bad guy here. Uh, sometimes it comes down to individuals in little scenarios like this just being top shelf. Uh, Road Rage showing us back in the art story before how that went. Look at Jinx and the patience he's got here. He's not going to race around the corner. He knows he's got machine guns there. Bam, another one down. All right, Rising's now questioning his values and, and purpose in life because he thinks two of my mates have just gone around that corner and died. Do I go or not? All right, do you back yourself or not? Now, we know Jinx is here and Jinx is a very good player, but I'd probably back myself. Here's Candy Rocks on the tank again. Literally carrying the tank upside down, but she's still carrying it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, handy thing to have an engine, your own pet engineer on your tank, I think. Uh, as this tank now puts fire support into that building there. Well done, 20th and 10th, though. They pushed back the Chimera attacks. As I said before, they pushed it back. Woo! You'd have to duck that. Uh, but they pushed them back off of that hedge that I mentioned before. Vitally important because now the tanks are oh, these candy there. See, they can't. Now it's harder for Camara to project force forward because they've got to defend against this fucking wave out here. So 20th and 10th now have got layers of defense. All right, and that's important. However, Mav's in the point. He's called in along here. He's fought his way along where Fable is. Whatever he's done, he's got there. We've got... <coughs> we've got lungs falling out. We've got Electro and Entice have come in on that garrison that's been put up there at that 1 o'clock position somewhere out there. There's a tank around the back too. I can see it. There's a tank up there in Polish there, and it's just killed Polish. Oh, that's big trouble here for 20th and 10th. 
because now we've got uh, Chimera guys in the back row, and you can see that tank. They're just there. Just there. I didn't actually know it was there when I watched the match. There's a bloody tank sneaking around the back. All right, well done. Look at it. It's now putting putting rounds in. I mean, if it's moving and it doesn't stop, go solo. Why not? But look at the AT guys hunting it down, and boom, and there she goes. So just a little bit caught out there, but oh, look, it put a little bit of panic in the back there. <laughs> Speak of the devil. He's just been nailed by the Panzer IV that was sitting there that shot that tank as it came in. Uh, so the defense of uh, 20th tenth is sort of holding. Mab's in that building, though, so he's going to be like a tick. And very hard to get out. And we've got these waves of troops coming down here now. 23 in a little bit of trouble here. There's a panther coming in there. I see it on the right. So they got two tanks there. That's that's super important. Uh, mobile pillboxes, remember. As long as you've got infantry to protect pillboxes, they will last for ages. So, uh, yeah, look, it's it's not it's not a bad defense here. But they've still got a lot of guys back in this building here. And you'd want to get your, try and get your troops up here. But they've got that tank out in the middle of the paddock. Uh, and these two tanks here hopefully should be able to pick it off. That Panther 4 is just holding position at the moment. He's doing okay with that. That's probably pretty smart. Let the Panther take the forward hits. Because uh, the Panzer 4 is going to struggle against that if it's a heavy tank, of course. Uh, you can see uh, 20 tenth now have sort of realized they've got some back lines trouble here. And they've got uh, Tex. Tex is back picking a few off. Panic's running across the paddock there. From this distance you can't tell, but that's Wheatfield. Uh, and an airhead's come in. Yep, so this is the first airhead. And at the moment, it's got some infantry support. Uh, I just worry it's a little bit tight to where the enemy are, and they would have definitely seen it come down. Remember, everyone always knows in comp play when you've got an airhead. Uh, so, yeah, look at that. Nadix just, uh, or Nadix just uh, nailed that airhead because he's seen it come down and just rocketed it. So at, at comp level, you've got to give yourself a buffer between where the enemy are and where your airhead is, because they're going to see it come down, they're going to run straight towards it, get rid of it. So not a bad attempt there from VK, but unfortunately a little bit too exposed, a little bit overextended there, maybe 50 or 100 metres too far. Uh, probably probably would have been better to put it in down here behind this building, maybe. Because <coughs> you're still going to get the same effect, and you've got all this cover here to move across the road from, um, and less chance of the enemy actually getting to it when your infantry was up forward. Uh, uh, all right. Back here, the Camaro guys have managed to push everybody away from checkpoints, so that's fairly exposed now. Uh, look at an opportunity for an airhead perhaps, but the trouble is there's no infantry there to support it. So 20th and 10th would be, uh, well, I'd be optimistic trying to get an airhead in without infantry support. Lot of this going on. Look at this city fight. It's just, this would have been brutal in here. It's just trade, isn't it? Bit of trade. So I'll shoot you and then someone else from your team shoots me and then someone from my team shoots the guy that shoots me and it just keeps going on. And, and it's... You know, these guys have been communicating lots. Um, certainly I can see the, because squad chat still exists, I just don't actually have the sound on. Um, uh, you know, you can see lots of comms going on in the squad itself, and there's only three of us in the squad, and I'm a caster. So Brainless and Cooler are talking all the time uh, about what's going down. So, uh, you know, those types of comms. Here we go. We've got a little bit of a look at the artillery again. You can see, oh, I mean, there's three, three back here now from... Um, from the Camaro guys trying to fight this area. Look how they've got it set up though. I do love this. We don't do this enough in the oceanic community. Uh, nodes are in there, right amongst the artillery and, and the barricades are up to provide extra defense. But against someone like Road Rage, watch him, look at him, look at him slinking up there. You can see what his intent is. Now, yeah, let's watch, see what he does here. Back on the artillery, bam. First shot in against Terriger, I'm guessing. Oh, he's missed again. So Rody can see all the way back there. So those barricades aren't enough to protect that artillery at that range from where Road Rage can sit. Joker now gets off the artillery. Well, he's probably safe there. Um, and he's, I don't know what he was doing there, but he just got picked off again. So, okay, that's just, yeah. I. It's always, when I'm on artillery, it's someone like Road Rage against me. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I, t I assume that. It's like assuming that, uh, you know, hackers can get you shit on the internet because they can. Uh, I assume someone like Road Rage is always shooting me when I'm on artillery. So I play it as if there is always someone like Road Rage shooting me on artillery. Uh, you know, I get on my guts a lot. I go out and sweep for their OP. I try and do whatever I can. Because I'm just going to get shot lots anyway. All right. Uh, where are we? Here's Colonel Matthews. He's got a bit of work to do here because we are now just over half an hour into this match. And after that initial cap, which was pretty quick uh, from Camara, um, 
Here's Calderon. He's going to pick up a couple in the field, is he? Oh, grenades. Grenades. Oh, good shooting from Goose. Bit of a defensive shot there. Oh, I took him out. Took the machine gunner out, but Goose has managed to kill him. Um, We've gone nowhere since about 25 minutes ago. It's been... That attack that came in from Kamara at the back of Rudigan Bobbers, gone. I like those still out there. There'll be a garrison still out there. The 20th and 10th have got their defensive line up to that ridge again. Oh, look at this. Um, great positioning, but I wouldn't put the two together so close. I really wouldn't. I'd, I'd split them up. Um, the reason I say that is because you, you want to try and get angles in shots. And also, um, you know, a good... Well, actually, now I remember. A good bombing run will uh, not do you in favours. <laughs> and uh, like all good guys, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> but I, you, you always want to try to get multiple angles. <laughs> and you can see there, that is the bombing run of the season so far, folks. Well done, uh, Colonel Matthews. You've absolutely laid waste to everything Camaro had there. That was a great bombing run. So it really took the pressure off the point here down south. But you can see finally Mav Squad has managed to push in again from that north area. They've lost they've lost the attack from the uh, what was it? I can't remember the camera here, sorry, from the bottom left of the screen here. So from the seven, eight o'clock position, there's no more Camaro attack there. Um uh, Electro's still out there somewhere. But like, you know, it's slowed it's still stagnant here. There's still a little bit of movement back and forwards, but there's if you if you think about where we were twenty minutes ago, there's a gradual inching of Chimera forward they've they've just been grinding 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 this was a grindy grinding battle for both sides here uh the same thing's happening we didn't we haven't seen much of it uh because i've focused on this area this is the point that's taking a lot of interest but up in that central city area uh there's a grind going on there too and it's just grind 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 and it's so hard it's so brutal we have the benefit of seeing all of these icons of course we do but oh butter dog by that man, a beer. That's the rocket. Stay down, he says. <laughs> good shot, man. I can see you're on the stream too, mate. Good, it's good to see you. Thanks for watching. Um, but it is grindy stuff. That's what I love about this game is you just, you got to fight for that piece of land that you want. The area that we took today is one meter by one meter. <laughs> good stuff. All right. Here we have this overarching view now of what's going on. And you can see that the 2010 uh, crew are just slowly getting ground out here. Anger's now around the back there with the satchel, no doubt, because he's, he's in assault class, the little lightning bolts of assault. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a rocket of skill, isn't it? <laughs> we used to call it that... Um, uh, uh, a wave of skill was torpedoes in World of Warships. We just said waves of skill <laughs> across, the, across the sea and see what you could hit. All right. Uh, this this is not looking good for 2010. Uh, Colonel Matthews is in there. That tells you something about how important this area is there. He puts pops panic. Well done. Nice shot. Uh, one of the top players of Camara. And Colonel Matthews nailed him. Well done. That's important. <coughs> that is important. Because these guys can change the course of a battle, these ones and twos sometimes. But uh, 20, 20th, 10th are getting pushed back here, folks. They are, they're, they're losing ground. They are definitely losing ground. There's another new tube from Butters, straight across. Uh, missed, missed your target there, mate. We caught that. All right, they're going to take you back to training camp there, Camara. Uh, there's another new tube, straight over the top again. Oh, you might as well throw harsh language, mate. All right, Butters is... Uh, but is this, what, what's those uh, anteater? You can they see like 30 centimeters in front of his face? So that, that short kill was good. <laughs> we'll see Butters alone. He did, he did well. All right. Uh, 20th, 10th, losing a lot of ground. Definitely a uh, little bit of a... Yeah, look, Colonel Matthews is right in there. And here's a tank coming in with it. I think that's a panther by the look of that from that shape. Um, I have old eyes, so forgive me. And uh, straight away, artillery's on it. All right. 276 is there from the Chimera guys coming towards the zone as as well. So I guess they're probably starting to build up some troops for well, they kind of they kind of own the point right now. Rudigan Bottlesville is right where Anger is. And and they own the point right now. Why isn't it capping? It's just because the spawn wave out of that bunnings on the right hand side there. Look at those shells coming in there from way the hell up there at the 12 o'clock position. So I I I don't know where they're shooting. They're shooting at but I don't know. There's good artillery coming in where the uh, 20th, 10th are in there. Um, good, good, good spawn wave there here. So 
A little bit, a little bit concerned for 20th tenth because this form wave is coming in from Bunnings only, or way up there at the 11 o'clock position. There's nothing through this uh, seven o'clock position, and that means that I feel like uh, Camara kind of owned that area a bit too much. Um, I'd want to see some troops here off to where, off here, off here. I really would because that's you can push into the point there, which of course, oh, tank just got nailed. That was the Panzer four, I think. Yeah, because there's the Panther there. So Bot John now picking up a few. He's, he's uh, uh, automatic rifleman, so he can't do much against the tank. Um, yeah, look at that. There it is. There it is. There it is. Camara now with that wave around the back. That's why there's 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 scout. He doesn't actually even know there's people behind him. Oh, this is actually going to go bad. This is going to go real bad for 20th tenth. They've got the spawn waves coming in on the right hand side there. Camara just for a moment there started to take the point, and that's cap weight starting to appear. Look at that. Look at the surge coming back in. Uh, 20th tenth really surging the forces back. Uh, Matthews would be realizing there's a lot of trouble here right now. Uh, a lot of trouble here because he knows that they've got nobody in the middle of the point, which means Camara must hold it because they can't see the blue dots. <coughs> and as these guys are starting to come in, yeah, they're getting picked off now. Real trouble for 20th 10th. They've, they've still hold that uh, hedgerow up here. That's important to hold there because that stops this wave of troops coming in from the main thrust line of, of Camara. But they've lost this uh, 7 o'clock position here. And they're going to struggle to get that back against the quality of, of players, you know. Um, but both teams have got high caliber players. So when you match up, you're not really going to go anywhere. So when you meet up in this position here, this is where your line's going to be. You're not just going to immediately push them back and let you, you know, have a, a massive smash up of whatever's there in front of you. We've got to assume equal level skill here to a certain point. Uh, not like some pub, pub matches where you get, you know, some of the top players and then all of a sudden the fucking level ones and they, they meet here and the level ones get pushed back over here somewhere and, you know, in about five seconds. Uh, but Camara, Camara taking the point here. Camara taking the point. Here comes those tanks. Yeah, here come those tanks. There's the two tanks. I can see one up the top there. Rockets coming from the side where this flank line is trying to be held by uh, 20th 10th. Uh, there's a panther down here somewhere. I don't know where, it's at, where it is. It's somewhere under the trees. Uh, I can hear shooting going on all over the place here and lots of good explosion, but I don't know where the fucking thing is. Someone pointed out for me quick. Uh, but Camara with a, just a wave push just happened right in front of our eyes there with two tanks coming in, a whole bunch of infantry, and that control of the area at the 7 o'clock position on the screen right now means that the only spawn point that 20th and 10th have got to play with is over in this building, which is now getting shelled at the shit house by everything that's got a big gun. Uh, because we know, everybody knows by this stage that there, well, there's a spawn, uh, six or eight people just came in there. That, they'd have to know that's where the main feed is coming from. Rockets coming in from the north now of map, so nine o'clock position into the buildings. Uh, 20th 10th trying to affect something here to, to slow down this cap because they've got, they've got airbags on the point and airbags aren't going to win a war, unfortunately. Uh, there's an airhead coming in now. So this is the second airhead now from VK. Uh, to try and push this, but he's put it on the wrong fucking side. He's put it on the... <coughs> he's put it on the side where 20th, 10th are. And they're... they're I don't know. I just... He's, they're going to cap the point anyway, by the look of this. They've got cap weight. But that airhead has gone... Oh, it should have come in down here in front of us. Or anywhere down the south part. Uh, down this area here. But it's gone in up way the fuck up there. And everybody's seen. Look, it's... Dragging his way in there, and Evo Bloodboard, he's been lining straight for that. Let's get rid of that, he says. Coco may be trying to defend against that. Um, there's some good defense going on down this way over to the right side. I'm at the three o'clock position. Um, here's oh, here it is. Stuka coming in. No, correction, that's not a Stuka, is it? Yes, it is a Stuka. That was a Stuka, and it went in on I'm not sure what. And we've got. We've got the double cap happening here. So what has occurred is that they've gone the one, two. Comera have thrown down a garrison. Entice has been out there vigorously building shit. And he's got a garrison on. 20th, 10th in super huge. Bubba's coming in now with a truck. He's got it. There's the Panzer four on the point. They're losing the last cap. We've been, we haven't even had time to update the freaking scoreboard here. 4-1 to Chimera. We were so busy criticizing VK's uh, airhead. Her hang on, I'm hearing the Deathless has built the, uh, the garrison. Whatever garrison, that is a brilliant, brilliant position for that garrison. <coughs> 20th 10th, we're not expecting the double cap to occur here. There's a recon gone up. That's a recon gone up to try and pick it. Look at this. This is huge. 20th 10th 
with just the Panzer IV on there and one truck coming in, a supply truck coming in, trying to throw down a garrison, the Ickbill are trying to do something here. This is critical right now. What have 20th 10th got to try and take this back? They've got a spawn wave, ladies and gentlemen. Three quarters of the team have suddenly rocked up. Is it enough, though? The point's still being taken by Chimera. The, we've got to remember the other point is being taken at the moment as well. But, like, it shouldn't be. The 20th 10th should be all back here right now. This is... Oh, it's, it's over in about five seconds. Unless this cap weight gets in there. There is the cap weight. 20th 10th have got the cap weight in and they are hanging on. Oh, five more seconds and that match was gone. And now the counter punch, because they've got the cap weight. <coughs> I'm losing my voice again. Root again, Volville. Cap weight from 20th 10th is in there now. Now Chimera are in trouble for losing this point. They've got to throw as many as they can in because they've still got all those bodies up there at Volville. <coughs> but they won't realize how many of 20th 10th that was an absolute clinch rescue there by a random garrison that 20th 10th happened to have back there, which was well positioned, to be honest, because that's why you have that shit for. When things go bad and the enemy outplay you, which will happen because we're not all we're not infallible, you have to have backups. And they had a backup there as geez, leave it to the last second there. Chimera are going to lose this point unless they get Catway back in, but I can see some numbers starting to come in here. Yeah, look, they've had some spawn in. There's been enough of the 20th, 10th dead. It's now going back the other way for Chimera. Uh, also, what's happening, though, you can see up the top of the map here, the 11 o'clock position, all of those guys that were attacking the last point, obviously VK's made a call and has gone, yep, we're not going to get this now. There's too many here. Down you come. Out we come. Let's go back and retake this area and, and reinforce it. Because nobody, like, Chimera didn't, uh, reinforce this position. When they capped it, we were so busy watching the cap happen, we didn't realise that there was a second cap going on. Uh, and and it was like, holy shit, and now bombing runs everywhere. Bombing runs everywhere. Two worst bombing runs of the match. Oh, wait, they didn't even, I think two people died. <coughs> but maybe there was a garrison that we didn't see that got taken out. Who knows? Camera have have gone right. Well, let's let's actually consolidate this point now. They've got the spawn waves coming in from the uh, from all all angles. There's literally 360 degree. Uh, rolling blue blob now coming in. The, the murder ball is coming in to the center of the point where the uh, six or eight uh, 20th 10th guys are trying to defend, uh, trying to cap. And shit, they did well to take it back to where it was. Uh, but they... Oh. <laughs> okay, so we play on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chimera now going to take uh, the Rue de Gambovsville area as well again. So we, we still... Well, they still hold it technically. So it's still 4-1 with... We are at the halfway point of the match. We almost had the game over at the halfway point, but 20th, 10th have gone. No, fuck you. We will not fall today. And they have come back, but they've got the work ahead of them. They have absolutely got an uphill battle with a sharp stick, pushing that poo in the rain. It is a tough fight here against the ever-grinding Chimera players at the moment. Uh, you could see up in the 11 o'clock there, we've got a bunch of spawn a long way out. From the point trying to grind their way back uh and that's a tough ask up there that is an absolute tough ask while we're just watching that and sort of recovering from the sweats of of excitement uh let's talk a little bit about the uh 20th Panzer grenadiers and i had a sexy video to do as a live cast but i, I can't do it uh because we want to we want to push in that poo that's what it is like we now let loose on push that but there's loot in the middle of the field with a couple of infantry support but they're they're getting shredded by whoever that was just then <laughs> We've still got a garrison up here in attack as well, by the way. Our penguins. And Ty's still doing the work up there, helping them out. Uh, but it's definitely slowed down up there now. Comera, you can see they've fallen back into a defensive posture. Lovely little spawn wave coming in at the back here. And that's that central city area again, uh, just off to the left here. Absolutely. So this is a hard fight area here. That's a whole squad that's just come in. Uh, Fearless squad come in. And look at the shredding going on there. Really, really good shooting, whoever that is. So many dead just then. Well played, whoever that was. All right, let's talk about the uh, tenth while we're, uh, we're, <laughs> we're 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 well, we're looking at what's going on here. All right, tenth are a competitive hill. Uh, sorry, the twentieth pence grid is there. A competitive hill that loses uh, individuals from around the world. Uh, welcoming environment is what they uh, uh, present for you, and um, their motto is "Together as one." I really wish I could have shown the video. Uh, their goal is to cultivate a competitive Hell at Loose team where everyone knows their in-game role is able to perform it brilliantly. 
All right, I like that. To do that, they offer multiple weekly practices focusing on different aspects of the game as well as regular 18 v 18, 30 v 30, and 50 v 30 as scrims and competitive leagues. Um, so I guess anybody who's watching that, you know, hit these guys up. 20th and 10th are always keen to do practice friendlies, all that sort of stuff, because it's great for everybody. It's great for gameplay and everything. Great rocket from Clementine. Unfortunately, didn't quite pick up the guys he was trying to, but they know about this spawn in here now, so at least they'll be trying to work that. And you can see the wave of stuff from uh, 20th and 10th. It's really starting to come back out now uh, and push Chimera back slowly towards Ruby doing and Bosville. But again, it's a, it's a long push here, a long push. But they got 45 minutes, they got 40 minutes. So they got time to do this. They can grind it back. All right, um... They focus on Hell Let Loose with a multiple dedicated 20th service and active Discord. Um, and uh, it's a good community from what I can see. And it's not always about Hell Let Loose, of course. Like a lot of folks, they play things like Hell, uh, Escape from Tarkov, War Thunder, Rocket League. Uh, they're North American based. A um, lot of uh, active duty members, uh, strong veteran members, that sort of stuff. So uh, they've won some stuff, International Cup Champions in, the, in 2020 and the Tank Smash Tournament Champions. I like it. I like it. Don't know what, what those are. And they sound cool. I like to run my own little tournaments as well, folks, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, an interesting point while we're, we're just talking about this sort of stuff, uh, the ping difference here, because we're playing on the, I think it's the 20th or the 10th uh, servers. So the ping in uh, the game for Chimera guys is between 200 and 300, effectively. Um, and that is one of the most endearing things about Hell Let Loose, is that... I personally find when you play on servers like that, uh, it doesn't really make a difference in Hell Let Loose. In, I've got rabbits in the background here, by the way, they're eating boxes. Um, in other games like Battlefield and things like that, the ping difference makes a lot of difference. Um, and I guess if you're trying to snipe, uh, it probably would in here a lot and stuff, but I never have any problems with it um, in Hell Let Loose. I really don't. I'm going to have to go and beat up the rabbits, I think. They're about this... Oh, I can't show you. They're about the size of maybe two fists, they're ne Netherland Dwarves, and they always do this when I like to cast. But maybe I'm, maybe they're excited! They're excited by the brilliant gameplay that we just watched, where, holy shit, the point just about got taken on that, uh, you know, and the game was over, but now it's not. <coughs> We've got 20th, 10th, trying hard to push across here to Rudy Gamble as well. But they're up against it here, aren't they? Look, look at them getting circled. They're getting circled by Chimera. Right, there's the tank. The tank's up here. There has to be a tank there because Candy Rocks is there. Uh, so, yeah, there it is. <laughs> See? Wherever there's a Candy Rocks engineer, there's a tank underneath. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, good defensive play now going on. Um, the Chimera guys are holding this nicely. And I've saw, I have just saw a uh, comment in chat about after two or three shots, you know, when you play on a long-range uh, long ping a uh, large ping server you learn how to just make the adjustment and it is it's beautiful like that and i think that's important for uh, international competitions in particular it gives us the chance to really play international matches which is uh, I, lo I love the local stuff of course but international is just that next level stuff and that's where you get the big competitive scene stuff uh and i want to be part of that and i want everybody to be part of that i, I just love that stuff that's what i'm all about is is promoting that community engagement, the excitement, the thrill of tournaments. Um, did you know that, uh, what was it, League of Legends or one of those things in Korea, they had like multiple TV channels de designated, dedicated uh, to it. Um, so, you know, could we get to that level of hell at loose? Probably not, but let's try. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, with the ping difference, I guess, <laughs> the point was just made about, uh, well, it doesn't necessarily mean you can still shoot straight and hit stuff, and that's exactly true. <laughs> I can't hit anything on a one ping server, let alone friggin' 300. It won't make any difference. All right. Uh, the squeeze getting put on this attack of 20th, 10th. Um, uh, this is a good squeeze here by Chimera. They're shutting down. This is good. Can of flanking play here from Chimera. Uh, really making it tough for the, the 20th, 10th guys to push in from anywhere, really. Uh, every time they try something like they've been doing here, five minutes later, they're getting swarmed by Chimera. Uh, and then back where they started. But we did see that a bit with uh, Chimera earlier, so, uh, you know, well, well well done both ways there. Uh, 37 left on the clock right now. Bit of fighting going on down here. Bit of a tanky tank. Uh, that's where that uh, Candy Rocks' is carried tank ended up, uh, and it just got nailed as well because it lost its engineer. Uh, well, actually, I don't really know what happened. Obviously, folks got flanked 
there were a couple of vehicles, I'm guessing. Uh, Butter Dog now coming in with the good old rocket for that Panzer IV. Uh, let's see what your gunnery is like at range this time, Butters. I have faith in you. You know, place your bets, ladies and gents, if I had that functionality. Does he hit the target first shot? That's the question. Mick running around the back as an assault class, probably chasing some tanks as well. Uh, Kane and Evo trying to work out where the enemy are coming from. At the moment, it is now a bit of a mess. There it is. Bam, right in the arse. Butter dog. Woo. <coughs> well done, mate. And he wants, he's going to chase it. Brainless is, brainless is so brainless. Boom. Brainless just wore it. And great shot from Butters. Took his, took his tank out. Well done. Colonel Matthews here trying hard. There's Knox. Told you, watch Knox. Wherever Knox is, there's a lot of dying. Look at this. He's just picking them off as they come around here. A uh, bit of pressure still on here for Volleville for the 20th 10th. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're trying hard. Look at the garrison layout. Look at the garrisons all around here. Uh, and we've got a couple of attack points on Volleville. I'd really be interested to see what 20th 10th had for Gary's defending garrisons. They'd have, you'd want to have five Gary's around that right now. And then a couple more down this way, of course. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they're up against it 20th 10th. I'm not sure they're going to be able to claw this back. Um, it's, it's you know, it's the where's the front line at the moment? That's part of their problem, of course. Uh, and this is, you know, as a commander, I could only sit here and think when my guys are telling me there's infantry all over the place, um, you know, and there's people pushing here, pushing there, whatever. How do you, how do you, is Brainless taking out a tank? Maybe, we'll see what happens. Um, how do you, how do you, Reorganize your, your defense. Oh, in the side, he gets taken down by the machine gun of the tank. So nice work there. A couple of hits in there. Uh, made the tank back off. The um, There's another tank down there to the right where Mugshot is. So uh, Von Luck down there looking after that tank. Uh, just saw something explode way over the back. No idea what that was. No idea. Maybe it's a, a light tank of the uh, Germans. 35 to go. The front lines are sort of starting to form up a little bit again here now. There's not enough 20th 10th up forward. And with you know, where Das, Hidden and Jinx are there, if they push through that middle, they'll break up that front line of, of 20th 10th as well. But the Panther now is getting pushed up that way. That will be a problem for the... Oh, geez, there's numbers here though from Chimera. And they've just tr shredded everybody down the 6 o'clock position of map here uh, with that tank coming with Von Luck on the back of it. So, oh, yeah, look, this is, this is real... They're getting pushed right back into their zone, 20th 10th. We'll go, we're going to up and have a look up here now and see what's going on the attack. There's not a lot. There's not a lot. Ah, oh, someone just sailed. It's just off with air with them. Um, you know, these guys, Mav, Bot, John and Fable, will keep putting pressure on the point. That's, I guess, probably the uh, mandate they've been given. Just pressure the point, guys. Pressure the point. They've, they've got this quite comfortably at the moment. They know they've got the defensive posture working. Whatever 20th and 10th have been thrown at them hasn't broken through at any stage, except for when they were trying to cap the last point and they left, um, they just capped Gamblesville and they left it pretty lightly defended uh, and they hadn't consolidated it in any way. So that that was the only time where they know that uh, 20th and 10th uh, put pressure on them. And you'd be, I mean, I, I don't know. I think about this sort of stuff when I'm commander. Um, you know, where, where, where have my weaknesses been exposed? <laughs> on this map with these particular players because it's not the exact same players every week for Camera, uh, and I would assume it's not the same for every for the other teams as well. But a lot of them are the the, the same people, of course. Um, but they do swap roles, I'm sure. Sometimes I don't know. Actually, that'd be an interesting point to have a chat about. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually getting. Hopefully, Von Luck will be able to join me at the next stream because I'll be doing the next Twitch stream live plus thirty, and I want to get him at the end uh, to come and just give us some uh, comments. Uh, and say hello, I guess, on behalf of Chimera and talk about some of this sort of stuff. So it'd be interesting, a little bit of a post-match wrap-up. Uh, Volleyball now in a little bit of trouble again. And I wonder why. I mean, there's bugger all people there from the Blues, from the Chimera guys, but they've managed to kill, or did they redeploy the 20th, 10th off of there? You could see, look at the, ah, oh, look at the sniper squad up at the back there, just causing no end of havoc in the back lines of 20th, 10th. Uh, so they have to chase them. And that's a favoured area up there in that top, uh, that 1 o'clock position, no, 11 o'clock position. Great putting up attacking Gary's up this way. You can see one there right down in that zone. That's what Clementine will be looking for, I'm guessing. 
they know there's something spawning out there, so he'll probably find that. It's red, so he, it looks like he's seen it. Just back down to the south area again, and you can see where we were away for five to ten minutes, and these guys here have moved forward, I think, 100 metres. And this is the nature of this battle. Isn't it? So they've made 100 metres of ground in five to ten minutes to take this next area, remembering that they held this earlier. Uh, that was where they were originally... Uh, that's that's where they were. So they've, they're just trying to claw back to where they originally started, like half an hour ago. Uh, how hard is that to do? You know. So anyway, uh, but again, the Chimera guys are really showing the skills. Panther down here. Um, lots of images are bought with it, but push, push forward, guys. Push the tank forward. Push, push, push somewhere. Um, that many infantry and tanks sitting there when you're down four four to one. And you're 200, 300 meters, 335 meters actually from where the camera is to that point. Uh, you've got to press. You've got to press. Um, but hey, it's all well and good from the cheap seats of commentary, isn't it? Perhaps I don't know what's going on down here. There's definitely something nasty in this area here. There's definitely something in that building of shit that maybe there's even a nasty gun. I don't think so, though. Uh, they're consolidating this middle area here. Uh, they've been there for quite a while, but Camaro in the wheat fields. And they're going to be hard to dig out of these wheat fields. I know this one. You can. There's always people running past each other in these wheat fields in pug matches, so I'm not surprised that they're having trouble getting across through this area here. You can look over here, though, and see that they're just getting picked off now as that squad starts to push in as well. And Comera now starting a little bit of a push on the uh, Volleville point. While they they know they're holding here, so they've probably just trimmed off a few troops because it looks like the number of Blue Force out this way have doubled. Uh, and that is probably smart play from VK. He's going, you know what? Squad of three, I can afford to lose you from defense at the moment. Go on attack, please. <coughs> because he knows these folks here are doing the work. There is some great defense going on here. These, these, the numbers here don't add up, do they? There's twice as many orange as blue, but they're making five, 10 meter bounds. Uh, it's just so hard to push because every little fucking rock and tree and bush and house has got to be cleared of these blue devils that are in there just popping bullets into you as you walk anywhere near them and this center area where these weird fields are probably not made his way straight across it well done there evo's up there now looking to try and kill dawnlight as it comes across and there's some push going on here from maybe maybe uh 2010th can get some push across this way this center area here uh but they are definitely getting countered by enough blue four in there as well so and look at the push down south here it's just slowly dying off as as uh, Chimera start pushing some troops down. They've got two angles of, of defense here as well. So they're getting cross-fired. And there's a rocket go. Ah, oh, geez, Von, that was a speculator at the front of a panther from 300 meters away. <laughs> there's a, there is a precision strike on the same panther, though. VK gets the Thunderbolts out and goes, I see your rocket, Von, and I raise you an instant kill. Well done there, VK. That is an absolute game-breaking move for the 20th 10th uh, to have lost that tank there. Brilliant, brilliant precision strike there. Static tank. No good in this meta. You, you just can't afford to unless you're, unless you're um, well in cover and no one knows you're there. But we saw it before with Chimera. They had the, the tank and the anti-tank gun side by side. They just got bombing run. So, real pressure though here, real pressure though here, as we lost that Panther tank over there, we've got now huge spawn waves coming in from all sorts of angles here from Chimera. Chimera have managed to move a whole bunch, as they know their defense is working really well, they pull more people away, they pull more people away now, and the, the, the recon squad is now pushing in from behind as well. This is big trouble here for 2010th. There, there's, there's trade going on here. It's going in It's going in the 20th sphere. They've, they've got it. It's in their favor at the moment. But look at the blue spawn wave coming in again. Uh, 20th 10th is a bit trouble. That was a tank, I think, from uh, Chimera that was actually on the point. Uh, I didn't actually get to see that one. So that probably changed things. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it was a Chimera tank there that died. Yeah, big spawn wave coming in now. 20th 10th again having to respond to a, the, the threat on the last point. Big bombing run coming in now. That is a 20th 10th bombing run to nowhere although map's going to run straight into it or fa no, fable's just going <laughs> to oh, oh, oh fable <laughs> you didn't see that one coming man <laughs> all right poor fable uh real really really problematic here right now for 20th 10 because Comera all over them 
They are all over this point, and there are not enough 20th tent on the point right now. There's there's a spawn wave in. It's only about a squad plus, uh, and they're all, they're already getting picked off as they spawn in as well. They must have very few spawn points to choose from. That's not good at all. There should be when this is your only point, you have all the options for your team. Um, <laughs> there's some dodgy bombing run dodging, uh, but. Uh, look, I mean, okay, there's a rocket from Jinx into that building just to... Jinx? How did Jinx shoot a rocket? Oh, was that brainless? Um, just watching now. So the point's blinking. You can see, I call it blinking. When it, it goes that, like, off colour, the grey sort of white colour, where it's switching backwards and forwards between the two teams. Um, now it's starting to go Chimera's way. Uh, and again, 20 to 10, look at it blinking. There it blinks again. It's sort of contested at the moment. So it's that contested thing. I call it blinking. Anyway, because uh, it sounds cooler than contested. Uh, but just watching this now, uh, th this is... I I just... I don't think 20th, 10th have got enough spawn points. They don't have enough spawn points to choose from. And the last ones are getting pressured here. There's a tank getting blown up. Great kill there. I think it was Caledonia's. Not sure. Hard to tell when I was up this high. But uh, that's, they're, they're just wiping out everything that's left from... 20th, 10th, I've, I've got a feeling this is game. There's that, that garrison is saving the match for 20th, 10th right now. That is the clutch garrison. If they lose that garrison, it is game over. I will say that straight up because there is nothing else for them to spawn in on within about 300 meters, which is a travesty. And, and I'm not blaming the commander there. I'm saying squad leaders should be on that from the 20th, 10th. If you've only got one spawn point left on your last spawn, on your last checkpoint, then you're doing it wrong. And you've got to get fucking garrisons up everywhere around that thing and give your guys options to come in on and throw your OPs down and get you to a fence absolutely rock solid and then take the 25 minutes left to start the pushback once you've secured your last point. But right now, it's it's still in their favour because they've got that one friggin' garrison that's feeding it. <coughs> and look at Gotrek coming in now. He knows there's a garrison there. He knows that they just spawned in there. He just saw them all run across the field, and he's going for it. And this is bad news. If the enemy know where your garrison, your last garrison is here. Look, oh, he's been picked off. Blackjack's there now. Probably lobbed some grenades in there as an assault class. A few bullets at least to start off with. This is... Fearless is now defending that garrison. He will probably be able to defend it from Blackjack. He'll probably be able to do it well. Uh... It's their only garrison. His penguins coming in with a machine. Oh, look at that! Rocket from who the fuck was that? Panic! Kill all the people in the garrison. That is an amazing rocket. Straight through all the shit. No one saw that coming. Not even me. Maybe if you've seen this before. Real, real problem right now. Chimera have got this point. The last garrison from 20th 10th is gone with the loss of that garrison. Where are they coming? Look how far back they have to come in from. Ah, oh, that's GG, ladies and gentlemen. There is no way. I don't even know what that red light is. There is absolutely no way that 20th 10th are going to be able to take this back. A clutch in there. Tex, I mean, he's probably got no supplies there. His OP goes down. He'll try and get his lads in. But Chimera have got the cap weight already. They've got the people in the point. Even if Tex gets a full squad in, Chimera is still going to cap because they've got people inside the circle. Um, and there's nothing much Tex going to be able to do here. Look at him. Look at that. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to go Chimera's way after what is yet again another match of World War One level crawling across the field, fighting for every inch of ground. Chimera, I don't know what I'm fucking doing with the camera there. COVID. Um... There's the spawn. Look how far back that spawn wave is. One spawn point. There's Tex trying to throw in. I mean, could they do it? They are. They are. They're taking it back. 20th, 10th are taking this back. But there's an airhead coming in. Oh, this is edgy. You see it's stuff now, ladies and gents. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> Panic penguins. Penguins is in there with a the machine gun. Defend that fucking airhead, mate. The last two haven't worked. Come on, penguins. Here's 20th, 10th. But they're getting picked off by the fact that Chimera owns so much of the map. So much sector control. Panic's rocket took out that garrison, ladies and gentlemen, and that is a game-changing moment right there. That garrison meant that this three-person spawn wave is all, is all that, ah, oh, they're looking at getting chopped down on the way in, the poor bastards, but that is brilliant play here from uh, Chimera. Disciple trying to get around the back there and put an OP up. 
<laughs> here comes the artillery. I'm losing my voice here. This better hurry up and finish. <laughs> this is this is exciting. Camara, it's going back. Camara's well, there's a spawn wave right in the point. There's the three. These guys here. These guys on the right from 20th 10th. They're the only thing right now that's going to be able to save them, and it's not going to work. Look at the cap weight in there. Bam, there goes a the rocket. I think it took out the OP. Artillery starting to fall in. There's smoke coming in as well. Shit, why don't we throw everything at it? Disciple, he's got his OP up. His squad's coming. It's too late. But now the spawn wave right over the back there. That, Garrus, it's not enough. It's still bl the blinking light of the cap is still happening. It is going Camara's way again. They've got weight coming in. 20th, they've got to throw everything. 20th, 10th, they've got to throw everything at this point now, but it's too late. They're not going to get enough here because look at the numbers starting to build up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see a Camara win here. This is going to go Camara's way through absolutely grinding play and some brilliant maneuvering. And there it is, a victory to Camara. Oh, God, I hate COVID voice. <laughs> what a match. What a match. Ladies and gentlemen, that was brilliant stuff. I gave VK the, the point this time too. I had COVID and I just gave it to the commander because he did so well. Uh, what a what a play. What a play. And just, I really enjoyed that. I really did. I enjoyed it through the COVID fog that I had at the time. What a fucking finish. You're telling me so many times there was yes, it was no, it was all over the place. Just brilliant stuff, and I really enjoyed that. I really did, and this is what I love to see about this competition. And I want to see these guys all improve. I want to see 20th and 10th get up again from there. The Camara, their first victory after a tight loss in that first one. Let's get rid of that stupid head of mine now. All right. So there you go. Camara with a 5-0 win through a very brutal grinding match. That was just so much fun. And I want to just show you something here, folks, that I've actually managed to secure which will tell you why, like if you look at the scores here, that's all well and good, but we don't get to see the individual scores. And I'm just gonna bring across, and I haven't got the music on here, so I'm just gonna leave the music off for a minute. But I'm just gonna bring across screen number, this one, and take off that one. And I want you to look at that. If you can see that well enough, that's just the website page. This is the stats from the server that, was given, that were given to me by uh, 20th, by Colonel Matthews. And, that's in order of kills, top, down. So look look at the top 10. Look at the top 10 right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 of the 10 are Chimera. The top 7 are Chimera. Now, uh, let's have a think about that. Road Rage, Sniper. Uh, Jinx, Mav, Panic, Nox and Butter. Frontline troops. So those guys were on point on the Vanguard and doing the job that they're paid to do. No, you don't get paid, by the way, lads. Uh, so, so I've been told. Um, killing the enemy and grinding forward. And that right there, those stats right there tell you how Camara partially made it through the waves of 20th 10th was those types of numbers. You just can't stack up against that when you've got such quality play coming at you over and over and over and over. Again, a Noxia Nox was in the front line sniping. That's right. Th these, these guys were doing exactly what Chimera wanted them to be doing. And that's what really helped with the game. You know, and we go down a little bit now and we start looking at some of the other guys. There's Evo Platypus is up there as I expected him to be. All right. We start to see the, the 10 to 20. It's still mostly Chimera players. <laughs> so, but we, we probably see some of those are artillery players and things like that. Um, I, I just... You know, that, that is hard to fight against. So kudos to the Chimera guys for such a uh, such an impressive gameplay, uh, such impressive, you know, fighting. And, oh, I just, I love it. That's not the one I wanted. I didn't even get to play that. I didn't get to play half the stuff. <laughs> so, um, well, look, that's, that's me, ladies and gents. Uh, I'm sweating. It was an exciting match to, to cast. Uh, exciting match to watch. I thank you for everybody that followed tonight, um, uh, subscribers, everything like that. Uh, check out my front page. It'll tell you what I'm all about. Um, the, the main thing I'll say for my stream is um, everything that, any revenue that comes in goes straight back to the community. So I do giveaways and stuff and that's all. I, I don't need to earn revenue out of Twitch. I've got a full-time paying job that stresses me out enough without trying to make money out of, of streaming. So I do it for the 
the love of the community and the love of the game and that I want to build everyone up into this. So, you know, I try and support all the other streamers that are trying to do it legit um, as much as possible. So you'll see Trauma Stu and I, we're going to do a match on Saturday night, um, not HCA. Uh, I'll probably be able to do the Friday night fight for the Oceanic community this Friday night. Um, and um, on Sunday or Saturday, depends on when the Chimera match will come up, I'll hopefully get that one again as well. And uh, across maybe this weekend, uh, yeah, actually, you know what, fuck it, decision's made right now. I will be doing a $50 Steam giveaway, I'll let you know. Um, it's bought through a ticket system, which literally, if you're watching the channel, you earn points. It costs you 100 points per ticket, maximum of 10 tickets, and then I do a raffle and someone wins. And I organize a Steam key for you of a product of your choosing. That's how it works. It's that easy. So uh, look forward to it. I mean, a lot of people here are captive audience anyway because they want to see the HCA matches. But hey, if you can get some free shit out of it and you can enjoy some good company like I do with all of you, then we have a win. All right, I'm done. I've had enough for tonight. I'm going to go sweat somewhere else. Uh, I will see you at the next stream. And thank you all for watching. And I hope you really enjoyed that. Good night and goodbye for now.